ladies and gentlemen. Imagine for a second that you are the pilot. You are sitting in the front seat of an airplane. And it is time to take off. So you push your thrust levers forward. You feel the machine around you roaring up. And as you accelerate down the runway, suddenly you feel gravity lose its hold of you and you disappear into the sky. And from your window, what do you see? This. The sky without any limits. But the people on the ground, they see a different story. <laughs> Every day, more than 100,000 airplanes like this one take off and fly away. Collectively, they're one of the top contributors to climate change, and not enough is being done about it. Do note, something is being done. Yet the measures and policies that are being put into place are a far cry to what needs to happen in order to stop global warming. And no, it is not complicated. Airplanes pollute, period. What are we going to do about it? Clearly, the air industry has to come up with a better solution than this one. And there are two solutions, two solutions that are truly sustainable. The first one, we have already all heard about it. To stop flying. Not really a solution, more of an honorable sacrifice. <laughs> the second solution, and this is a great solution, it's green flying. But we're told it's not possible. Well, not entirely. There have been a few successes in making an airplane fly without producing any harmful emissions, like this one or that one. Yet, when we take a look at them, we can see that they're barely capable of carrying one passenger, nowhere near to what the air industry is looking for. So you can imagine the surprise when I first read the requirements to my final bachelor project. Because these were to design an airplane, I was following, after all, the aerospace engineering curriculum, an airplane capable of carrying 19 passengers from London to Munich in less than two hours without producing any harmful emissions. How? <laughs> we are struggling to make an airplane fly green while carrying one passenger, yet now we were supposed to carry 19? Yet out of the other 26 different projects that I could have chosen from, this is the one I went for. Not only because it will put my engineering knowledge to the test, but also because it required to be both critical and creative. My two favorite pastimes. Literally, if you sit down at my desk at home, you will see left and right paper stacks, booklets, sticky notes, full of ideas that I've scribbled down. I am an inventor. And with this project, I wanted it to be more than just a grade for my diploma. I realized that this was an opportunity, nay, a challenge, not only for myself as an inventor, but also in order to do something about global warming. And this passion about trying to harmonize people, technology, and the environment together, this is what brought together our team. In our own ways, through the power 
of creativity and tinkering, we wanted to make the world a better place. Now, as much as we want this, we still have to stick to the laws of reality. And since so many had already tried to solve this issue, we were quite confident that we would fail. <laughs> that the end product of our project would be nothing else than a good learning experience with a report on the site stating, green flags not possible. But we still wanted to give it our best shot. We still wanted to see how close we could get to making green flying possible. And that is why, when we started our project, we decided to collect every possible idea. No idea was too crazy. Every idea had its fair chance. We would assess them, analyze their feasibility, everything as objectively as possible. When the facts were missing, we looked for them. When the numbers were missing, we put them together. We wanted to let math do the talking. And well, we came to the point where we ended up with our top three ideas. The first one, the battery-powered airplane. Yet, when we do the math, it turns out that we need to have a lot of batteries. And then, all the structure to hold it together. And then, even more structure to have strong enough wings. And then, basically, we end up with a structural snowball effect. We cannot take off. Batteries are too heavy, even when considering future development. And the resources to make all those batteries at the quantities that we're talking about, we will quickly run out of them. In short, with batteries, we still aren't solving our issues. The second idea, and this is just to show you that we really went out there with our ideas, it's a rocket plane. Yes, it is possible to fly green with rockets. However, rockets aren't that great in efficiency. They're great in terms of power, not efficiency. Which means that we still have the immense weight problem. We still need something better. And it is here where we suddenly ended up with a different answer to what the air industry was giving us. An idea that barely anyone was talking about. Yet this idea allowed us to fly without producing any harmful emissions. And it was lightweight. And the resources were readily available. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to green flying, it is not batteries, it is not rockets, it's hydrogen. The moment that we started working with this idea, our numbers just kept getting better. We weren't struggling anymore to take off. We were flying. We weren't fighting anymore with the requirements. We were winning. And at the end of the 10 weeks, we stood there and could not believe it ourselves. We had done it. We did it. We actually managed to conceptually develop an airplane capable of flying completely clean with the technology that we have available today. So I hope that by now you're biting your toenails to find out what does it look like? How does it work? <laughs> well, let's get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Green Liner. Yes, this plane is capable of carrying the 19 passengers from London to Munich in less than two hours. But more important, it can take off and fly without darkening the sky. Nothing except droplets of water is what comes out of this plane as it crosses land and sea to complete its journey. <laughs> 
And it does so thanks to an extremely lightweight hydrogen fuel cell system that we have installed inside this plane. The hydrogen that we carry inside a tank at the back of the airplane is combined with the oxygen from the air to produce, through fuel cells stored inside the wing, water and electricity. The water, little droplets, is emitted into the air, and the electricity is what powers the propulsion system. Now, some of you might have that extra sharp eye and are wondering, what is up with all those propellers at the back? Well, you see, now that we're working with electricity instead of fossil, fu fossil fuels, we do not need to rely on the conventional arrangement of engines. Instead, we can make use of a propeller arrangement that can aerodynamically enhance the performance of the airplane. So you can see why hydrogen is so special. It not only allows our green liner to fly like we do today, but with this technology, we can fly beyond our current abilities. Yet it is here where we must suddenly stop and think, why isn't this already flying? Why isn't this already a thing? Because there is still a lack of incentive. Businesses today are still not required to consider sustainability aspects. All that matters is to get the next product out. And as such, sustainable technologies remain as an optional luxury. But things are starting to change. People are buying and investing in new technologies. Energy production is shifting towards cleaner alternatives. And carbon regulations are finally being put into place. And it is here where our Green Liner comes into play. Because it is so much more than just a concept. It is a message of how far we can go if we dare to take the next step. How far we can go if we give this technology a chance. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no more reason to darken the skies. No more reason to wait for global warming. Green flying is possible. No doubt, ladies and gentlemen, the green era, it can all start today. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.